In this video, we're going to look at how to build advanced functions with PowerShell. We'll be using commandlet binding to define advanced functions. We'll set up some parameter sets. We'll be outputting based on those parameter sets. Um, we'll also register uh, parameter completers and um, accept pipeline output. You can see here that I have a basic function called getMTGCard. When I execute that, it actually returns a basic Magic the Gathering card from the Scryfall API. You can see the name, uh, image URIs, and other information about this card. Now let's add some functionality to this uh, function. We're adding another parameter called name, and we're going to use that to query a different method inside the Scryfall API to actually return a named card. So you can see here I've added an invoke rest method call. I'm going to call the uh, named endpoint and do a fuzzy search for the name. So once I uh, execute that and save it and run it, now I can type the name of a card and it'll output that rather than a random card. So you can see here that I'm typing in steel overseer and it returns the steel overseer card. Now that we've set up our basic function, let's turn this into an advanced function. I'm going to put the commandlet binding attribute on the top of the param block. And this more or less defines this particular function as an advanced function. Then I'll add the param att or parameter attribute to my uh, name parameter and set it as uh, the named parameter set. And I'll make sure that that particular um, parameter is mandatory. I'll set the default parameter set to random. So if I don't specify the name, it'll do the random uh, parameter set. And if I do the named, it will uh, do the named parameter set. And I can check the parameter set value on PS commandlet rather than the named argument. So now when I execute it, it's going to behave the same way, but it's now an advanced function. So you can see here, I'm searching for Shivan Dragon, and it returns that particular card. Now we're going to add one more parameter set to this particular function. Uh, I'm going to add a new attribute, or parameter, which is going to be an ID. So we'll do an ID parameter set with an ID parameter. And instead of just uh, checking for else, I will change this parameter set check to look for the random parameter set. And then I will duplicate that and I will look for the ID parameter set. And we'll call a different uh, Scryfall API to actually look up the card based on ID. So uh, now that I have this function defined, what I can do is grab the ID of the previous card I looked up, and we're going to actually execute this function and use the ID parameter set. So you can see here, I paste the ID in there, and then I am looking up the same card uh, based on um, that uh, parameter set. So now if we run get help on this, you can see that we have three different parameter sets for get MTG card. Now that we have a function to get uh, magic cards, let's actually create a function to show magic cards. So I'm going to create a show MTG card function. I'm going to define a single parameter that actually accepts um, a card. So we're going to get that from MTG card. And this is also going to be an advanced function. And you can see here that I am uh, putting in the commandlet binding again and a parameter block where the value is coming from the pipeline. So that is going to accept pipeline uh, output. When defining a commandlet that accepts pipeline input, what you can do is define three different sets of blocks. There's a begin block, a process block, and an end block. The begin block is called once, uh, when the pipeline input starts. This is a good place for initialization, such as creating collections or initializing variables. Then the process block is called, and that's called multiple times uh, for each item in the pipeline. And then finally, the end block is called once at the end of the pipeline output. So you can do things like process all the um, items that were collected during the pipeline uh, input. For this function, what I'll do is create a begin block that has a cards array. Uh, and then inside the process block, what I'll do is I'll collect each one of the cards by adding the card that was added via the pipeline to the cards array. Finally, at the end block, I'll take the cards array I'll use for each object to go over that particular array. And then um, I'm going to actually use start process to open that card's image URL um, in the uh, default browser, whatever that may be. So I'm going to use the uh, dollar underscore iterator um, and then images or image that underscore URIs and I'll get the large image. Now that we set our function up to accept pipeline input, let's see how that works. 
So I'm going to call get MTG card and pipe it to show MTG card. And what that did was it actually started a web browser and now you can see the large image for Shiv and Dragon is shown. The other thing that we can do is we can define two cards. So I'll get what card one, which I'll get by name. So we'll look up the Tinker card. And then once that has been done, we will get another card. So I'll get card two and we'll do a named card again. And in this case, we will look for Karn. Then we will output those to make sure that they're okay and put them into an array. So we have card one and card two in an array. And we are gonna pipe that to show MTG card. So that called the uh, start process twice. And now you can see I have two tabs with two individual cards showing inside my browser. Now we're gonna define another function. This one's gonna be find MTG card. Uh, this is going to use the scryfall API to search for cards. Well, a single, single parameter called query, uh, and the parameter is going to be mandatory. From there, we'll use invoke rest method again um, to call the scryfall API, and it actually has a, uh, a search API that we can use, and it just accepts a single parameter that's required, which is the query. So once that's been defined, we can actually use find MTG card. And what you'll see that is that it actually returns a list of cards rather than a single card. So if I search for something like Dragon, uh, it returned a whole bunch of uh, cards and it, it states whether it has um, more data and the total number of cards that were returned. So the Scryfall API actually supports paging parameters. So we're going to add that to our commandlet. You can use the supports paging property of commandlet binding to do so. Once you do that, PS Commandlet will allow you to access paging parameters. You have things like first, include total count, and skip. We'll use the skip parameter to page inside the Scryfall API. So I am going to add one to the skip value, and then that will be the page for my uh, Commandlet. So now you can see when I say find MTG card, if I do skip or first, they now appear. We'll set skip to one, and we'll search for dragons again. And now you can see the output's a little different. Has more data is now false because we've skipped the first page and we're on to the second page. Next, we're gonna add support for should continue to this commandlet. This is typically done for commandlets that make changes and prompt the user as to whether or not they uh, want to accept the change that's about to be made. So um, in this case, the Scryfall API is read only, but you know the find command could take a long time to run. So we're gonna add uh, a should continue prompt to this particular commandlet. First, we'll update the commandlet binding with should, support should process. From there, we can use the ps commandlet uh, variable again to check whether or not the user has accepted the should continue prompt. So should continue accepts two parameters. Uh, the first one is kind of the query that we're making, so we're going to pass in the query, and then a question. So are you sure you want to search scryfall? If this returns true, then we should continue. Otherwise, we should um, return out of the function. So now that I've defined that, uh, what we can do is we can actually use um, that function. You can see now it's prompting whether or not we want to search scryfall. Now we're going to register a argument completer for our PowerShell commandlet. So register argument completer integrates with PS readline. So you just use register autocompleter to do that. We're going to specify a command name of get mtg card, and we want to complete the name parameter. From there, we accept the script block, and this is what's invoked when the argument completer runs. This is the standard param block that you need for register argument com completer. The one thing that we're really concerned about is the word to complete. And you can see here that I'm calling invoke, invoke rest method, and they actually have an autocomplete method that allows me to output um, strings based on um, the word to complete. So if I could type get MTG card down here and hit name, and then I'm actually hitting control space, and you can see that it's actually outputting a whole bunch of values that are available for this particular card name. In this video, we went over how to create advanced functions with PowerShell. If you have any feedback or would like to see some modifications to this particular video, uh, please let me know. If you found this useful, definitely subscribe to my channel.